from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Who is this Tom guy? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. Do you really care about It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Right down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Before I do anything this hour, <laughs> I want to read you an email. I'm just going to read it to you straight. I told this to the boys and they couldn't believe it, but I'm going to read it straight. This is from a listener named Jeffrey Nord. He's located in Edmonds, Washington. And the uh, subject line of this is referring to a reference on a previous show, Dodgers 10th inning win. And here is Jeff's email. Tom, don't want to be the brick of the month on top of the pussy of the month. But I am not located in California. And if you'd explain a bit, that would be great. I researched to figure out who was on first, because that was supposed to be significant. But couldn't find out. If you could fill in the blank for me, that would be awesome. You had Dean laughing his ass off, and I'd love to get in on the fun. Signed, Jeff Nord in Edmonds, Washington. Jeff, all I'm going to say to you is this. I already told you. Who's on first? No more explanation necessary. Now you're in on it. And uh, much as I hate to keep beating up on New York and the culture of New York, first of all, you have that uh, new governor, David Patterson, the guy who replaced Elton Spitzer, client number nine. The guy is uh, legally blind, and that's fine. But uh, he wasn't too blind to have had a variety of extramarital affairs, and apparently his wife did too, and he wanted to make sure you knew that when he took over as governor of New York. Now we have the latest, and I went into the uh, our local representatives of the Italian-American League there, Mr. Dean J. D'Amelio. The J is for Giuseppe. Just to inform him about this before I read this on the air. <laughs> and there's nothing I like better than a Republican from Staten Island. That's, that is my favorite. Listen to this story. This is from uh, the Associated Press. Dateline, Washington. Representative, get the name now, please. Vito Fasella of New York. He acknowledged on Thursday that he fathered a child from an extramarital affair. Answering questions that arose from his arrest on drunken driving charges last week. Let me quote Mr. Fasella here. My personal failings and imperfections have caused enormous pain to the people I love. And I am truly sorry. 
said Fasella, a Republican who has three children with his wife in Staten Island, New York. Wouldn't you love to be in his office when the sanitation lobby comes knocking at the door? We want to talk to you about an issue that's very important to the community. Fossella's private life came under scrutiny after he was arrested last week in the Virginia suburbs of Washington. Police said his blood alcohol level was twice the legal limit, and he could face a mandatory five, five days in jail if convicted. That's tough punishing. Tell you what, that's punishment. When Fasella was pulled over, people said, <laughs> you want to talk about the tools of ignorance. Listen to this. Police said, <laughs> he, all right, he's pulled over for drunk driving. So what does he say? How about you just say, <laughs> uh, okay, you got me, I'm drunk. Or, I'm not drunk, I only had two beers, or something like that. But no, Congressman Fossella, here's what he said to the police. He told the police that he was going to see his daughter in the area. That prompted questions from the cop about who the daughter was. In his statement, here's what Fossella said. He said, I have had a relationship with Laura Fay." With whom I had uh, a three-year-old daughter. Laura Fay, I don't think she lives in Staten Island, by the way. She's the one who got him out of jail. She bailed him out after the arrest. <laughs> the disclosure. <laughs> hey, you guys ain't got no culture in California. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> this is the kind of putts they vote for in New York. Can you believe this? Says here the disclosure clouds Fasella's political future. Notice, I mean, anybody else, anywhere else, that would be the end. You're done, okay? While you're driving drunk, you, the conservative Republican, admit to the cop that you're busy running to see your bastard daughter out in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. How much more do you need to end your political career, right? But it says here, the disclosure clouds Fasella's political future. He faced a surprisingly tough re-election campaign in 2006. And Democrats were hoping to unseat him this year. Says here, um, well, I understand there will be many questions, including those about my political future. Making any political decisions right now are furthest from my mind. Over the coming weeks and months, I will continue to do my job and I will work hard. To heal the deep wounds I have caused. <laughs> By the way, uh, the genial congressman, 43 years old, serves as a member of the House Committee on Energy and Commerce. So he's one of the people who signed off on $4 gasoline while he was busy uh, knocking up chicks in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. Isn't that great? L.A., you ain't got no culture. Yeah. Speaking of which, remember I told you in New York, talk radio is a whole different ball game. I mean, <laughs> that you can't tell the callers from the hosts that one sounds like the other. In fact, I strongly suspect the hosts were once callers who became hosts. Now they talk to the callers. What I'm going to play you very briefly is from today. Now, we just picked this out. You can tune in anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It sounds just like this, okay? This is what afternoon drive talk radio sounds like in New York, okay? I, I want you to hear this. Because when I tell you that everybody sounds like Vinny and Vito and Sal, if, if, if this doesn't prove the point, nothing will. Mike the Mad Dog on Sports Radio 66, the fan, WFB. It's Frank and Master Pico with Mike and Chris. Frank, what's up with you? Okay, first of all, okay, nobody, I'm just curious. I mean, I, I job us to really slow down a little bit. I didn't hear anybody complaining about this last year. That's number one. 
Number two, Chris, if you're going gonna to rant on her about the score, get the score right. It was 5-3, not 6-3. They got to run in the bottom of the eighth. They got to run in the bottom of the eighth. That's better than the home run in the bottom of the eighth. It was 5 -3. Okay, correct. Get the score right, Chris. Right. You're right. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a, oh, Frank, I'm doing a talk show here when I'm when the game's going. It's not, that, it's not like I'm studying the game here. Now, number two, Matt Walsh. Bottom line is it, it wouldn't have won. It wouldn't have tied the game up if he had a home run. It wasn't guys that. on base. I You're right, though. I get the score right. Five three. Okay. Now number three, Matt Walsh. Now they're saying that this guy wasn't the source of that article that first came out. So oh, he think was well, a, who who was the source? Well, it was one of Walsh's friends. It was one of Walsh's wait, friends. Wait, wait, wait. Friends. How did Walsh not all this time? How Three of Walsh, them. How can Walsh show up four months after the fact and I'm say he know. had nothing Who's to the do host with this, of this story show? when he yeah. he doesn't know that this has been going on for four I, months? I mean, I it, it, yeah, come on. Uh, wait a minute. I heard the writer get interviewed today. He's claiming that Walsh was not his source and he was bamboozled. I swear to God. I'm well, wait a second. Together. That's fine. But bamboozled. wait, somebody Walsh been in since February 2nd. Someone's been in contact with Walsh since for four months negotiating with him. Why didn't he tell him then that he didn't have anything? I mean, gee whiz. We all, he, what, he doesn't read a paper? I mean, everybody talked about walkthroughs forever. Well, wait a minute. Someone sakes. was negotiating for Walsh this whole time. Now, come on, Walsh can't act like he doesn't know what's going on now. Yeah, here's Eddie Mike on a car phone. Eddie, what do you have today? Hey, guys, how you doing? Hello, Ed, time, what's up? Time. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah, Eddie, we got sure you, can. what's up? Go ahead. Okay, first time, long time. I got an observation and then a question about Java. Uh, I heard the, uh, I heard it on the radio, and i didn't not sure if you guys, if Sterling ever made any mention of it. <laughs> did, and, not hear, uh, did not hear that. Can you hear the guys? What do you? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I apologize. I'm getting a goddamn headache here. Can you believe that? We're not making this up. This is the city that says that the West Coast has no culture, and then they vote for guys <laughs> like the congressman Vito Facella from Staten Island. While he's not upholding conservative Republican values in the House of Representatives, busy knocking up chicks in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. <laughs> Those New Yorkers have a lot of nerve attacking anybody, don't you think? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I don't trust anything that bleeds for a week and doesn't die. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5-800-TOM. I'm looking at the screen now. All the New Yorkers are hiding. <laughs> but let's not let Jersey get off the hook here. Some of us are set now this story from New Jersey, which is like the sixth borough of New York, as we all know. Dateline, Moorestown, New Jersey, which is closer to Philly, actually, than New York. But what are you going to do? Here it is. More charges have been filed against a Burlington County police officer who was recently charged with sexually assaulting three girls. Authorities announced Moorestown, New Jersey, officer Robert Malia Jr., age 38. I'm not making this up. Has been charged with four counts of animal cruelty after allegedly engaging in sex acts with cows. Between June and December of 2006. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, baby. Yeah, we ain't got no culture out here. <laughs> 1 800 5 800 Tom is our telephone number. Eric on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? It's going okay, Eric. Right on, dude. Hey, you know, I just wanted to make a comment on the whole uh, voice thing that you're talking about, these New Yorkers. I used to work at a retail store, and uh, there was two different guys there from New York City who had no connection with each other, and they both talked exactly the same. It's it's ridiculous, and I just heard you talking about this. Sorry, I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> just, it's, it's insane. <laughs> it's too funny. Did you hear the little clip of talk radio, what it sounds like in New York? Yeah, those 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 two guys or those three guys that you had on the radio or that you play the clip sound exactly like those two guys, and I'm sure they have no clue who, they, who each other are. <laughs> Complete douchebags. <laughs> the thing is, you can't tell the host from the callers. I I agree with you 100, percent Tom. I mean, could you tell which one was the host and which one was the caller? Uh, not not until the other guy, uh, not until the third guy came in. 
And <laughs> then, then I then I could tell. But other than that, man, it's it was it was it was ridiculous. No but doubt I, about it. Right on, Tom. Thanks for taking my call. Can you take me out old school? I certainly can. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. You know, it's funny, we talked about New Yorkers on the show yesterday, and they were just, uh, they were all packed in here, waiting to defend New York. I don't hear them now. They're all hiding. <laughs> Jack on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey, Dad, what's going on? Not much, son. Wow, I just want to commend you for your uh, beautiful comparison of Los Angeles and New York. Man, that was that really made me feel good about moving here five years ago. I'll tell you that right now. Now, now As, you, you heard that radio show. I mean, oh uh, my God, I would rather listen to uh, broken uh, Spanish English for four hours than listen to two <laughs> minutes of that. I will tell you that right now. Well, every that time, I, every time I go to visit my brother in New York, I get in the car, and that's what it sounds like for an hour and a half driving to his house. That's what I'm listening to. They need more shotguns in the car of all those uh, cars out there so everybody can blow their brains out right as soon as they get in because that would just solve a lot of problems. Man. Hey, can you take me out Kobe style? Tom? I certainly can, Jack. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, fascinating. Everybody on the lines have been calling in uh, uh, to to pile on to New York, and no New Yorkers. The New Yorkers and the New Jerseyites. Are they New Jerseyites, Gary? And New Jerseyans? What are they? Doesn't even know. Gary left New Jersey a long time ago. Uh, anyway, whatever they are, they're all hiding. Because how do you defend some of this stuff we just did here? How do you defend that? How do you call here and tell us that uh, the West Coast or the Dallas or that Seattle has no culture? We ain't got no culture. There's your New York, New Jersey culture right there. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Long time, first time. Thank you, Robert. I just have a more quick comment. Um, I hate New Yorkers, and I think they all suck, and they're a bunch of sons of bitches. Look at that. Yep. That's pretty they're all, up. That's they're all cocky. They're too damn cocky. <laughs> and they're cocky about what? About everything. They just think they're the best at everything they do. Anybody, no what it is, they're better. Anybody who's ever ridden the world's longest urinal, also known as the New York subway system, mm -hmm. knows differently. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right, Tom. Can you take me out, Kobe style? I certainly can, Robert. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 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 It's 1-800-5800-TOM. I see Giovanni on the phone here. Is that, uh, is that with a J there, Giovanni? Uh, that's with a J again. That's with a what? Is that with, is that with a J, Giovanni? Uh, no, uh, with a G, Giovanni. Oh, okay. Let's check it. How you doing? Uh, first time call, long time listener. Yeah. Um, and just like you, born in uh, the rotten apple and came out here and living out here for 10 years, I've, you know, lost the accent. But No, 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 you, no, 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 no. You have <laughs> not lost the accent. I, well, I, I mean, I, I sometimes still hear it. Myself, I went, but... Yeah, you telling me you used to have more of an accent than this? Yeah, my, I guess so. Oh, but, my. Uh, yeah, when I heard uh, the clip, I'm like, oh, that's uh, Mike and the Mad Dog uh, from uh, the, uh, I guess, ESPN or Talk Radio. And uh, so I can, when I pick it up out here, it's just, especially from girls, it's really bad. And I, if I'm thinking it's bad, I'm originally from New York, I just try to avoid, uh, you know, especially girls like that. And I could see exactly what you mean. You know, when I lived in New York, like, yeah, we think we're all the best, but it, it is pretty bad, especially, you know, moving out here. You can just hear the accent and the ads. Yeah, the Yankees this and that. It's like, oh, I'm glad, you know, I definitely moved out here and just, you know, love it. All right, all right but Giovanni, you have to remember yeah. now, if you want if you want to be able to pass uh -huh. as an Angelino, what's rule number one? Don't say you're from New York. Well, no, no. Well, that's rule number two. Rule number uh -huh. one is you don't refer to L.A. as out here. Uh, uh, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I remember listening from that. Uh, Unless your plan that? is to go back there. 
back there, exactly, back there. Uh, but, yeah, it's just really bad hearing that, uh, especially, you know, with, with those two guys. And you're right, you can't tell who the caller is unless you're, you know, from back there and you you pick up the show. Well, because the callers are just as illiterate as the hosts. Yeah, and, and and they're pretty bad too. And just they just go on and on and on and on. So when I heard the clip, I'm like, I know who that is exactly. So I had to give you a call, Tom. Thank you, Giovanni. Uh, could you take me out to uh, George Lucas stop, please? No, because we got to cease and desist. We can't do that anymore. And by the way, nobody in LA is named Giovanni. That that's a little clue right there. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Larry on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Larry. Long time, first time. Very good. All right. What's this all this junk about you bagging on New Yorkers? You're a New Yorker yourself. Come on. No, I'm not. You are. You're from the Bronx. Yeah, I, I, I was I was born in Manhattan. I lived in the Bronx till I was 10 years old, but I am not a New Yorker. I have not lived in New York in 27 years, and I have no connection to it. Really? Really. Just let it go out of your system. I'm done. Uh, when I first moved, I've been here for 10 years. When I first moved out here, I got my first job. Out here? You know, out here. When I got my first job. was So your plan to is to go back there. Oh, I'll never go back. Then then, then why do you call it out here? It's habit, I suppose. It's just here. Okay, here. Here. I've been here for 10 years. And when I first got here, I got my first job because I was from New York, because we know how to get things done. Oh, oh that that is the biggest load of crap. <laughs> that is the biggest load of crap. Now, you have got to be kidding me. I'm being honest with you. By the way, how's the World Trade Center doing? They rebuilt that yet? I don't know. They're working on it. I thought you said, wait, you just said New York's not to get things done. How long's it been? Well, I got to do the cleanup. The cleanup has been done for years. I have nothing to say about that. Yeah, I'll bet you have nothing to say about that. New Yorkers are no better at getting things done than anybody else. They just, they're they just bad, bad, louder talkers is all they are. I don't know. I got to disagree with you, man. Well, you 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 think you got to disagree with me because you're out here. But uh, guess what? You don't have to disagree with me because plenty of stuff gets done here in Los Angeles. Plenty of stuff gets done. But I'll tell you what, though, in my experience since I've been here, I won't say out here, but since I've been here, I see the way things get done. And it's amazing to me that anything does get done. But it does get done. So clearly there's... Eventually... <laughs> Uh, because people don't have to browbeat each other and curse at each other to get things done like they do in New York. Yeah, but that just adds to the fun of things. No, it that doesn't. Anything? No, it doesn't. By the way, if it's so much fun, why don't you find a job back there and go there? Well, I came here for the weather. Well, guess what? Uh, the weather is part of everything else that's wonderful about this place. I'll agree with that. And New York is not the center of the universe, except in its own mind. I don't agree with that. Then, <laughs> why are you here? That's why I'm here. No, but you, it's cool. You're here because you don't want to be in the center of the universe? Eh, it's a little uh, a little too high pressure. I got tired of it, so I moved out here. A little high pressure? Say again? The weather stinks. The people oh, yeah. are nasty. The place is filthy. I don't think the people are nasty. I think I'll be honest with you. I think L.A. people have much worse attitude than the guys. Really? In New York. Is that oh, so? Yeah. In what way? In what way? Yeah. Oh man, my job and where I work and what I do, I'm constantly surrounded by industry people. Constantly surrounded by people who think basically their whole thing is, "Don't you know who I think I am?" Oh, uh, that has and nothing to do with being from here. And I might add, working on a movie lot as we do, most of the people in the movie industry appear to be from New York. <laughs> Really? Yeah, really. Well, I don't work on a movie set, on a movie. Trust line, me when I tell you, you said you're surrounded by people in the business. Yeah, but I, I, I'm not in the movie business. I have a lot of clients that are. What business? Are you, well, I'm telling you. Where are they all from, really? Have you checked their birth certificates? You really think they're from Los Angeles? Uh, didn't get that in depth. With yeah, them. I bet you didn't. I just had to call because I think it's hysterical that you're constantly ragging on New York and you're from there. Because I'm sick to death of New Yorkers 
calling in and trying to say how great New York is and how L.A. is inferior. Because uh, every I could pull stories out every single day about the stuff that goes on in New York, whether they're shoving plungers up the ass of innocent people uh, or whatever it is they're doing in New York. Well, that kind of stuff happens here just as much. Really? Who got a plunger shoved up their ass here in Los Angeles? I'm sure somebody has stuff sometimes. He doesn't hit the Well, news. yeah, well, it didn't hit the papers. Yes, of course. In New York, it was a big story. True. Right. All right, Larry, uh, thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. You gotta love this. Tom, Tom like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Get in, get off, get out. That's my motto, man. Don't be stuck with one girl too long because it's nothing but headaches and problems. It's the Tom Likas Show. God damn you! From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Thank you for coming to the Tom Likas Show. You'll be glad you came. At one 800 800 talk I just always wanted to say that. Anyway, uh, oh yes, the continuing saga of the New Yorkers who love to tell us we have no culture. And uh, some of the great uh, examples of New York culture we presented to you this hour. Let us say here uh, hello to Matthew on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom, Matthew here. Uh, just wanted to comment on uh, the thing that annoys me most about New Yorkers is their mongolization of the Italian language. Um, what they call ziti is mastacholi. There's no, no such thing as a fugazi. It's a finocchio. <laughs> not risotto, it's risotto. You don't have Sunday gravy, it's sugo. So I don't know what these Dago dingbats are doing, but I'm one myself, man. I'm a guinea Dago grease ball. Nicolati, baby. I love being Italian. And I always get accused of being from New York because I grew up in South City, San Francisco on Visitation Valley. <laughs> you want to live in a tough area, I'll take anyone from New York. This is the only place you're scared of the white kids walking around. <laughs> yeah, we're right next to Hunter's Point, baby. <laughs> so, and, you know, I'm also used to working down Avalon and 135th also. And the only other place that scares me more than that is Baltimore, right outside John Hopkins. <laughs> so New Yorkers got nothing on culture, being scared, being tough. And I got accused of being a New Yorker the other day at uh, Jerry's Deli in uh, Glendale. Did you demand an apology? Uh, no, I just looked. I said, I said, what the F are you talking about? <laughs> said, oh, you look like you're from New York. <laughs> said, no, I'm not from New York. <laughs> so these guys, I don't know what their deal is, man, but I've dated three girls that have moved from New York out here, and the best thing is you can't find any girl from New York that isn't a stripper or a heroin addict. <laughs> I mean, that's a plus right there. <laughs> down to see in Houston. Yeah, that's a blast. <laughs> <laughs> These people are much, man. <laughs> but I love your show, and I tried to call in yesterday. Couldn't get through. I'm so glad you had the same thing on today. Thank you, Matthew. All right, Tom. Take it easy, man. Appreciate the call. Here comes Lorenzo on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yeah. Yeah, I told you, screener, I'm from New York, but I'm really not. I just wanted to get on the show and tell you how annoyed I am with them. I work with two of them. And screw New Yorkers, all right? That's all I got to say. Can you please take me out of the bunk? So of course I can. Here you go. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Roy. On the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. How are you doing today? Doing okay, Roy. Hey, I'm from Oregon, and I used to long-haul truck drive. And I've been to New York and Chicago and all them places back there. And they are the most rude, nasty people I have ever met. They're rude to each other. They're rude to everybody that comes around them. And if that whole section of the country fell off in the ocean and took them with it, good for them. <laughs> they are just... Dude, I don't understand how how the hell they think they can, you know, that they're cultured and they do this and that when they're as rude as they are to themselves and everybody else. 
Well, I, you know, I agree with you, and that's why I'm getting fed up. You know, I've been living here for 20 years, and I actually first came to L.A. 30 years ago, and I loved it from the minute I got here, and uh, even back then, 1978, I was here in Los Angeles hearing New Yorkers complaining about it, and I just don't get it, or making fun of us. You know, but being nice and, and polite to each other up here. I come to L.A. and I don't have a problem except for where once in a while I've got to have a bad day. Other people. All right, we're losing you, but thank you for that. I they love to say L.A. is full of fruits, nuts, and flanks. I mean, have you ever been in the bleachers of Yankee Stadium? In the home of a bunch of thugs, murderers, and creeps? I'd rather be with the fruits, nuts, and flanks. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Ricky on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Yes. Hey, hey uh, I'm originally from New York, but out here 18 years and haven't haven't called since my bad accent two years ago. But uh, you know what? I, I left New York a lot because of <laughs> that same comment on um, the whole accent and everything. And I only come back when I hang out with my boys back from New York. All the fire department comes out and meets me in Vegas. Well, uh, like, I, I, I don't mean to I don't mean to rain on your parade, Ricky. Uh. <laughs> it, it was, I only saw him two weeks ago, so it's Richie, and it was only a couple weeks ago that I saw him. By the way, yeah, have you noticed there's nobody in California named Richie? Yeah, well, only in New York. Life, man. I, 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 don't want to, I can't change that. My mom even calls me Richie. Only in New York. <laughs> hey, but it's, hey, I'm out here, I'm not going back, and that's all I can say. <laughs> what did I tell you about calling it out here? If, <laughs> can you blame me? It's the, it's the only place I want to be. It's here. Be it's south. just here. Here. Well, here is well, here. Well, it's it's on the other side. It's the other side from what? On the side of the ocean. No, no, not for, not for you it isn't. And by the way, it's not on the other side of the ocean. It's on the same side. Hey, it's not my fault, my parents. We are, we are all here. east of the, we are all east of the Pacific and we are all west of the Atlantic. All of us. Yeah, well. I'll, I'll give you that much, but I still unless we're in I, Hawaii, <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not moving out there because I'm not going to be stuck on a rock. <laughs> Thank you. Stuck on a rock. You know, I'm, I'm so glad I came out here and lost the accent. People can't tell I'm from back there. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Chelsea. On the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Good day to you. Indeed. I was calling because I've lived on both coasts. I'm originally from Southern California, but I lived in New York for about 15 years. Had to get it in within 12 seconds. <laughs> and uh, I agree with you and I don't agree with you. I think Californians, it uh, depends where you are. But I'll tell you, New York, uh, I don't know. I, they just tell you like it is. I think that California, uh, the weather's great. Really? Uh, yeah. How about uh, how about that congressman we uh, read uh, about uh, to you, uh, Congressman Vito, Vas Vito Fasella? Did he uh, tell it like it is? No, that's not probably a good example. Uh, ah, yeah. I yeah. see. Yeah. yeah. How about Roger Clemens? Uh, think, was he telling yeah, it like no, it was no, when he was pitching in New York? I agree with you. I agree with you, but I think California... When he was busy boning bubble. Mindy McCready, was he uh, telling it like it was? No, no. I don't, uh, yeah. Jason no, Giambi, was he telling it like it was? I'm talking about the day-to-day -day people. How about Elliot Spitzer? Was he telling it like it was? No, no. He when he was boning either. hookers, was he telling it like no. it was? <laughs> yeah. No. Shall I get on the list? <laughs> no, but I just was going to say, no. I mean, people in California you live think in Hillary Florida. Clinton tells it like it is? Oh, God, no. <laughs> There's a very long list. We could just keep going here. I know, but I'm not talking about politicians so much. I'm talking about everyday people. Everyday people going on the subway. No, they're just, no, there's a difference between telling it like it is and just being rude. Well, I don't know. I see that here in L.A. too. I mean, it's, you know. What do you see in L.A.? People can't be bothered. People can't be bothered with you in L.A. You know, they just, they can't be people bothered. People in New York can't be bubble. bothered with it. What, are you kidding me? If, if, in, in In Manhattan, if people see a dead body, they step over it on the way to work. Are you kidding me? I don't. I don't agree with you 100. percent Oh I please! I you. grew up there, darling. Don't be fooled. No, I'm not fooled. I lived there for a while, and I'm just for saying well, that you dove, you clearly don't know it as well as as some of us do. And no, trust no. me when I tell you, these people. There was a story back when I was a child about a woman named Kitty Genovese who was being raped, and 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 dozens of people heard her screams for help, and nobody helped her. 
It's a famous story. It was going around for years. I mean, please, people in New York don't want to be bothered. If they see trouble, they run the other way. And you don't think that happens in California? That's not the point. I'm just telling you, New York is not these wonderful, giving people. You're giving oh, them credit no, for being. They're not. I don't think that they are at all. I'm not saying that. You ask, ask a New I'm Yorker. Ask, have you, did, when you were in New York and you were new to New York, did you ever go to Carnegie? Did you ever go Dated to, it. did you ever go to Carnegie Hall? Yes. Did you have to ask for directions? No. Do you know what, you know what a New Yorker says when you ask, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? No. Practice. <laughs> All I'm saying is that... Yeah, you're laughing. I am. Next time funny. you're in New York, ask a New Yorker, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? <laughs> All I'm saying is that there's good points and bad points in both places. And I think people in L.A. live in a bubble. I think they all worry and concern about themselves. So what? So What's wrong know. with that? You think I give a rat's ass about you? I'm just talking no. to you because some guy's paying me. <laughs> give a rat's ass about you. Well, I don't care about you either. I know. <laughs> and that's it's just that that's, that's why I love living here. Who cares yeah. about you? What about yeah. me? That's true. By yeah, the way, in so New York, great. they only care about themselves, too. They just they just talk louder. That's true, too. There we go. There we go. I hope you have a grand day, and if you can take me out uh, any way you want. <laughs> any way I want. You know what way I prefer. Eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, the entire telephone number. Dean looked up Kitty Genovese in uh, <laughs> Wikipedia. He was researching. He was checking up on me. One eight hundred five. You're damn straight. I haven't been wrong. You think I pull these things out of my ass, Dean? One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, that's our telephone number. It's Don on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, Don. Hey, how you doing? Great. First time, long time. Thank you, sir. Many long time. Hey, I'm a chauffeur. I pick up a lot of people out of the airport, and occasionally I get somebody from New York, and you can tell within two seconds where they're from. If they haven't told you within ten seconds. Well, they, it usually doesn't take that long. <laughs> <laughs> you can just tell by the accent. And, you know, they're basically rude, crude, and socially unacceptable. And I'll guarantee you, you're not going to get a tip. And I get this all the time. It just when I, as soon as I get in the car, I go, "Oh my God, here we go again!" <laughs> just it's amazing, <laughs> and they're all the same, every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it never fails, never ceases to amaze. <laughs> and you're sick of it, right? Oh, definitely you're sick of it, right? I just wish they'd stay back there and never come out here. Well, I, I agree with you. <laughs> I just as yeah. as you know, Danny on the Tom Likas show. Hello, hey Tom. How are you? Long time, first time. Doing great. Uh, I gotta say, I I'm from New York originally. I've been here six years. And I love L.A., but your points are way off. You play a thirty second clip from Mike and the Mad Dog, which, granted, was painful to listen to. Actually, it was, actually, it was more than two minutes. Yeah, it was a long clip. But I I don't know if you've ever played your show back, but. Some of your callers are just as painful. No, no, no. You don't understand. The commentary was not about the callers. The commentary was about how you can't tell the hosts from the callers. Well, I think you should keep in mind in New York, a little show called the Howard Stern seems show seems to have done pretty well. Howard Stern does not sound like the callers. No, Mike and the Mad Dog, by the way, who also have like an ESPN show, they get huge ratings. No, they there. they do I'm not have an ESPN show. That is not true. Uh, they have a show on the Yankee Network, which is only seen primarily in the New York, New Jersey area. Well, I'd like to do a little impersonation of one of your callers, if you would. If it's not the callers. It is the, first of all, everybody has the same accent, and the hosts sound exactly like the callers. I'd give anything to have the callers sound exactly like me. You know what I'm saying? Well, so would most of your listeners, I think, because some of your callers are, are just as painful and annoying as well, the I, 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 How did you get through? Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I got through because I, I guess I'm... Uh, because you're so it. articulate. I am, but yeah, uh, yeah. the other two points... Yeah, you're you're, here, you're here from New York to tame the savages out here. <laughs> You've actually proven your own... Oh, yeah, I've proven my own point over and over. You're right. The Tom Likas Show.